All right, welcome everyone. This is the Whitman Finance Committee meeting for Tuesday, January the 5th. It's seven o'clock. Um, I'll just do a quick uh, rundown of our agenda. We have meeting minutes from November 17th, 24th, and December 8th. The reserve fund stands at $38,775.60. Public forum is uh, temporarily suspended due to the uh, uh, conditions and limitations of the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. If you need to get a hold of someone from the Finance Committee or would like to bring something to our attention, you can certainly send me an email, uh, rianderson at whitman slash ma dot gov. Um, under new business, we have budget manager meetings with Socio Votech, and then with the Board of Health at eight o'clock. Um, also under new business, so. Uh, uh, we have on the agenda the uh, special town meeting warrant under old business, subcommittee reports, uh, discussion of the overall budget, and uh, the annual town report draft uh, to talk about. So um, upcoming meetings. Um, right now we could be posted, we are posted for next week uh, as far as an agenda. Um, we're unsure as far as uh, the Board of Selectmen's availability. We'll be finding out tonight. Uh, I did meet with Lisa and one of the things I asked to bring to the board was their availability for a joint meeting. So at some juncture tonight, we may discuss uh, what the board would like to bring up for agenda items in a joint meeting with the board of selectmen. So with that, uh, we welcome uh, Ralph. Uh, happy New Year. Hey, Happy New Year, everybody. So without All further right. uh, delay, uh, we are going to um, open the meeting and um, we have the uh, South Shore Votech budget uh, meeting. Um, so Tom Hickey, uh, representing the uh, uh, South uh, Shore Regional Votechnical S School District um, in the budget uh, presentation. Uh, first of all, let me say, Tom, um, you know, I made it clear to the um, Women Hanson Regional School District at our uh, meeting with them that uh, we consider the fact that you have uh, completed a Herculean effort uh, to get an educational program to the students of the district. And we have to applaud you and, and the staff and, and all the educators for uh, making an extraordinary effort to get that up and running. Um, you know, here at the Finance Committee, we focus on the financial end of things, but it doesn't go without notice, uh, the work that you do to make sure we get an educational program for all of the students. Um, for the Thank, you, Rick. Th Thank you very much. Uh, you can all imagine that the, uh, the vocational component of the school is at the center of everything. And it is very challenging in many of our programs to deliver a, a remote education. So uh, we're happy that nearly all of our programs have our kids in every day. And when they're on their academic week, uh, the kids are in uh, two days a week out of five. We've made some uh, slight adjustments coming out of the, the December break, but uh, I'm overall very pleased with things stand. So I appreciate your, uh, your comments and your, your, the committee's continued support. Great. Uh, we, we also appreciate the fact that you did forward the uh, budget presentation uh, so that we had an opportunity to review it. Uh, with that, I'll let you take over. Do you want to have the presentation up? Because uh, John Galvin is probably capable of putting it up on the and sharing the presentation. If you want to go by that, if you just want to go and I, run through the budget, it's it's totally up to you. I would I, I would be happy to. Well, I if if committee members haven't had the chance to look at it, I could certainly go through it. But if you'd like me to, I could thumbnail it. You've got a copy to review. I could. I could hit the financial highlights and probably save more time for questions and handle it that way if you'd prefer. Sounds great. Yep. Okay. That sounds perfect. So I'll work off of a paper copy I have here, and uh, I'll just hit some of the some of the highlights. I want to thank you again for uh, this opportunity. This is the tenth budget I've uh, been able to bring to our communities as as we kick off our uh, this budget cycle. And in this budget year, um, as Rick pointed out, we're certainly uh, navigating every day. Uh, but teaching and learning has to continue and uh, our communities continue to support that effort. So I come to you for a fiscal 22 budget request, which as you know, uh, prior to a governor's budget number, we would be unable to talk about specific town assessments. We've probably been in this conversation the last couple of years, uh, as a, but by January 27th, 
we will have the governor's, uh, the governor's budget in which we will see chapter 70 numbers. And then as we have done in the last few years, uh, you know, the morning of the 28th, I can email out what we would project uh, for assessment. So whatever I say in the next few minutes, the one thing that at this early stage I couldn't talk about would be uh, a specific number. But as I've said in the past, I would be more than happy to come back and, and continue a conversation once you have better, uh, more refined numbers to look at. That being said, this budget year is a lean, is a lean year uh, for us and we recognize it as well. So the, the budget proposal that I made to our school committee in December was for an overall increase of 1.89%. Uh, uh, that increase uh, allows us still to make progress in some areas, uh, but we are, we're definitely mindful that um, operationally our zero-based budgeting approach uh, you know, worked, in, in my view, effectively as we were able to target dollars where we needed to. So I'm going into this budget cycle on, you know, as you are all focused on, you've got to be focused on the revenue. You know, you have to be realistic about revenue projections. And so what I said to our, our committee is that our in-district enrollment is up, our non-resident enrollment is down. Uh, and while I won't know what chapter 70 looks like, I would expect that we'll probably have a slight uh, a revenue shortfall uh, overall. So in other words, uh, when I look at the chapter 70 money, the regional transportation money, um, and I'm trying to project, I would say that the money that we would be losing from non-resident tuition probably won't be offset by an increase in chapter 70. And so when we're looking for new dollars from our communities, we've got to be mindful that if you can't bank on the revenue you had last year, you've got to account for that first before moving forward, which is one of the influencing factors for me in, in terms of this, the overall budget percentage increase. Uh, the other piece of the budget that's important and allows us to, to come in with a, a lower number, as I see it, is that we still, uh, as you've heard me say for several years, we're still trying to be as aggressive as we can uh, with capital improvements, infrastructure. You know that we have a, uh, an original building built in 1962. We have an addition that was built in the early 90s. And I've said to our committee that uh, it, it's no secret that you know we, we've done well to maintain our building. That's why MSBA uh, has continued to politely say, sorry, try again next year <laughs> as we look to get some, uh, some infrastructure support. But we are reaching the end of the conversation when it comes to smaller capital items. And, uh, and so capital is going to continue to be a big part of our, of our budget. I see, our, I see us needing to use stabilization funds to help support some of these capital items. That's why we have the fund. And, and we've been very diligent and methodical in, in uh, creating that fund. Uh, and now I think as we talk about window replacements and roof replacements and fire suppression updates in part of our school, which doesn't have fire suppression, uh, these will be some of the projects that will be coming online that, that I think influence the overall budget. But we're not just talking about fire suppression and roofs and windows. What about the educating of students? Um, I think we're able to do that quite well. And even within this budget, our biggest items going in for instructional purposes that I flagged for the committee included a, a, a replacement of history uh, textbooks and a maintenance of our one-on-one -on -one online, uh, sorry, one-on-one -on -one device uh, model, which COVID has, has, has really nudged us. We were very good at having devices that we kept in Chrome carts in each classroom. And now we've given those devices to the kids. And I see, I see that becoming part of the new normal for us going forward. So there will be enough funds for that to continue. Um, I think we can all agree that we really don't know what September of 2021 is going to look like in terms of our instructional delivery. We certainly hope it's going to be better, but having a device in every kid's hand is going to continue to be important. Uh, this budget does not include any debt. I, I would have told you this a year ago that we were just mopping up the rest of some about $5,000 worth of interest off of a roof project that we paid off a little early. Uh, and so uh, it's not going to, it wouldn't, it won't have a major effect on assessments because it wasn't much to begin with, but uh, the fiscal 22 budget won't have any, won't have any debt in it. Uh, there is some personnel uh, that is in this budget. A few, uh, what I said to the committee was, I want to continue to make some incremental moves from positions on grants to move to the budget. A portion of our English learner instructor, our horticulture sh uh, shop aid, and then some part-time nurse support where we need some additional support. Um, as you may know, we have an allied health program. 
And part of the, one of the hallmarks of the program is that the kids go off campus for clinical experiences. And with uh, you know, maintaining Department of Public Health ratios, having an LPN that would accompany a teacher would allow us to uh, expand that program and expand some of the offerings. So, there's a, so there are some uh, personnel items in the budget as well. Uh, the capital items that I would have sent to you in the presentation are really at the heart of, of most of what I could talk about. But uh, the capital focuses mainly on what, I, what I'm telling the committee as being the, probably the last big capital project that we can sustain in a single year budget. And that's to replace the windows and the metal panels in our 1992 edition, which was flagged as a priority from our uh, facilities audit that we had done in 2018. So we should be able to cover the cost of that within this budget. Uh, there's some additional funds in there to help us continue with some additional design work so that we are always a year ahead with our planning. We will go into construction this summer for windows, but we're also going to be designing a roof and we want to have funds available to continue to be on a design and build model. The difference, which I'll talk about in just a couple of minutes, is that we'll now be at the point where at this spring town meeting in all eight of our towns, I'll be asking our, our communities to, uh, and our, our school committee and our communities to support a debt authorization, which is really gonna allow us to have, to be able to take on bigger capital projects and, and not have there be a one year sticker shock with assessments. We can't do a roof for one and a half million dollars and throw that into a one year capital item and watch assessments go up. So having no debt, I think with it, the timing is uh, fortuitous for us to, to look at what are the next big projects in line. Uh, and the other smaller capital request that I mentioned in the presentation was about some expanded parking. We're very, very short on parking and uh, having some additional parking spaces near our school restaurant and salon will be key. Uh, as you go through the presentation, you for those of you who have been on the committee, you'll notice that I've kept many slides that, that, that orient a new, a, a new listener or a new viewer regarding our MSBA uh, the, uh, applications that we've been putting in. Uh, we're short on space and we need to upgrade what we have is essentially the theme. And I try to provide you with some background on that. Uh, Whitman's enrollment numbers, I'll, 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 I'll pivot. Uh, Whitman's enrollment uh, as of the October one reports uh, is level at 135 students. So that's the number we'll be bringing into fiscal, uh, fiscal 22. And the presentation generally ends with uh, topics that you're certainly well aware of that we've talked about over the years, which is what goes into our assessment. And that about 70% of the assessment is really driven by the state formula. And then the rest of the town's assessments are driven by the regional agreement, which covers uh, capital debt uh, and operating costs. And all of that is done in by, by student uh, ratios, the number of kids divided by the number of uh, uh, in your town divided by the number of kids in the building. So when we provide you with that broken out assessment, as, as you've seen in the last several years, you'll know that if the assessment is $1.6 million, then you'll know which portion of it is debt or capital, transportation, uh, or which part was given to us by the state formula, uh, which part of it is over the you know, operating costs over the minimum. And so tonight is my first opportunity in this budget cycle to start talking to our communities. I will, I'll have similar meetings with our other towns uh, as we get deeper into the winter. Um, the other unique conversation that I'd like to have with you uh, briefly and happy to revisit it is about that debt authorization piece. So we would be, we would approach this uh, from a point of view of wanting to get authorization from our communities similar to what we did in 2010 in order, to, in order to fund a roof project, but that we would be bringing to our communities an article that would give us the ability to incur debt to take on some of these projects. So what I'll be bringing, what I'll be eventually bringing in the form of an article is, uh, is an explanation and a rationale, basically looking at our master facilities plan. I've said to my committee that, uh, while I don't wanna nail down a number, I, I have said that when I take the plan and I adjust for inflation, and, and I consider some funding for a modest addition, we need to give ourselves a little bit of breathing room. We're probably talking about 17 to $18 million. The unique part about this authorization in my mind is that this is not a one-time uh, incurrence of the debt. In other words, we couldn't afford to all of a sudden borrow that money and then start spreading those payments out over 20 years. But what I wanna be able to do is to say to our communities, you know, we've been talking about these concerns 
We've got them documented and outlined. If you give us the ability to make future decisions in future years, it means I won't have to come to eight town meetings with each successive project. And so hopefully that's something that, if I, were, if I were to look into the crystal ball right now, I would tell you that we'd have no debt in fiscal 22, but we would probably borrow some money to do the roof on that 92 edition. So we get this budget passed, hopefully we fund the window project within the budget. Fiscal 22 comes and goes. And then in the spring of, in, in this spring, we get enough, hopefully get all eight communities to approve the authorization. And then when we're building the budget a year from now, and when I'm in front of you a year from now, hopefully what I'm saying to you is, we're going to re replace the roof. Here's what it's going to cost. We had, we were able to put together this amount of money, and that includes some money that we borrowed uh, for the roof project. I know that's, that may be getting a little too far ahead, but you're no strangers to wanting to talk about long, you know, forecasting and things like that. Uh, so, so, so that's where I see the debt authorization article going. We would not take action on this. As you know, when a regional school committee votes to incur debt, uh, it triggers a series of timelines. And so uh, for me, given that most of our district town meetings are, uh, Situate has an early one in, in April if they, if they keep that date. But most are in May, so I would I would envision our committee uh, looking to take action in March or April. But the key point is that between communications with your boards and town administrators, no one will be surprised by what we're trying to do. And so uh, I'll end there uh, with a comment on debt authorization, only because that's a unique piece of uh, of, of what we're talking about anyway. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have, or go over anything that I may have glossed over that you'd like more detail on. Okay, Tom, thank you very much. Um, you know, just as I uh, apologize at the beginning, I should have introduced, we do have a new member on the finance committee, John New. Um, in all the other finance committee members are Hi, the John. same as last year. Yes. Um, and then with respect to the capital, um, just so you know, if you don't already know, uh, Dave Cadero, our vice chair, is also the chairman of the Building Facility Capital Expenditure Committee. And, and that would be probably some place where we would like to get that into our matrix. Dave, would, would you like to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, Tom, I, I think I have your email address. I'll send you an email that um, identifies the, uh, the 2015 Whitman article that uh, established our committee and set, set our parameters. Let me send that to you and then uh, let's have a discussion once you, once you get a chance to read that. Happy to do so. All right. Okay, great. And, and just one other thing before I open it up to uh, questions. So for the purpose of the finance committee's uh, deliberations on the budget, we are utilizing our, uh, what's referred to as our article two worksheet. And for the um, South Shore Regional VOTEC, line items 170 and 173 represent the numbers associated with your budget. Um, so just a quick question regarding um, the uh, vocational transportation. Um, we had a discussion a little bit with the uh, uh, Whitman Hanson Regional School District about um, uh, the costs associated with busing. Um, do you expect, uh, or have you seen a reduction in costs with respect to transporting students? In the, uh, th thanks, Rick. In this fiscal year, uh, no. So, so um, in order for us to be able to run this year, part of the creative uh, approach was that we we're on a staggered schedule. So we bring in um, we bring in one group of kids at our normal starting time, and then we bring in another group of kids about an hour and fifteen minutes later. So our buses are going through Whitman <laughs> twice a day, morning and afternoon. Uh, and we got a waiver from the state in order to make those adjustments. Uh, so we own our own buses, or in this case, we have a lease to, uh, we, 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 um, we own our own buses. I've got a 15 bus fleet where we lease uh, 12 propane buses. We're on a five, it's, a, it's a, a pretty good arrangement, a municipal lease, a five year lease to own. Uh, so we're paying an annual lease and we'll own these uh, buses at, at the end of five years. And then I have three diesel buses that we use as spares and we employ all of our own drivers. Uh, so I so I have not, uh, I mean, COVID, COVID reimbursement through the county 
will allow us to account for some of these additional transportation costs. And the fact that they've extended that is good news because I would, we would be making the case and, and as we document our COVID expenses that uh, these extraordinary transportation costs, namely the second bus run in the morning, the second bus run in the afternoon would not normally be part of our routine. So for, for this year, Rick, I would say it is, uh, there are increased costs. Okay, so for last year it was 52,000. I know it's not a very big percentage of your budget, but you would expect that to rise then for uh, fiscal 22 budget. I am, uh, I, I would expect it to rise, although I'd like to, I would like to believe that we would be, um, I'd like to believe that we would be in a different situation. But again, if we're not, if the state doesn't change its guidance on how many kids can be on a bus, one kid per bench, or about 23 kids on a typical size bus, then we're gonna see similar, yeah, we're gonna see similar costs because we don't wanna roll back the amount of contact time the kids have in school. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Uh, anybody have any other questions for Tom? Tom, as usual, oh, we, uh, Kathleen, go ahead. Well, first, Tom, I want to thank you for that presentation. I did access it and it was so informative. Oh, good. Uh, thank you. My only question is, do you have an explanation for why the out of district en enrollment is going down? Sure, every <laughs> year it's every year is different. Uh, we, we accept all in district students whose application score is above a score of 60. Every year, it's a new crop of rising ninth graders. This past year, uh, we only accepted in-district students. It was, uh, and so we graduated a group of non-resident seniors and, and we didn't have any, we had no non-resident students in grade nine. It may, who knows this year, uh, but, but that is, that's the reason, Kathleen. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, anybody else? All right, Tom, um, we, like I said, we appreciate you coming in in advance of the, uh, you know, the full information that you're going to eventually provide us so that we can complete our article two and make recommendations for town meeting. This, this meeting is, is critically important for us to start getting the information and the, 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 the presentation that you, you gave us to begin with is very, very informative. So. I, I appreciate that, Rick. I know it's only half the story. It's good that you can hear the rationale and what we're trying to do. And then the affordability piece for you all comes later. And we'll get you that information as soon as we can. And you can, and, and you can have me come back for another meeting if that would help. Okay. And as you know, Chuck Colby is your liaison for the yes. uh, committee. Feel free to reach out to him or to me and we'll get your information. If you have a question or we have a question, we'll make sure that gets back and forth. Fantastic. All right. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks, everybody. Happy New Year. Good night. Good job. Good job. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks, Tom. You're welcome. Okay. So that puts us a little ahead of schedule uh, with the fact that Tom came in early. Um, the Board of Health is scheduled for eight o'clock. I would say that we could probably get into some of our other business and then suspend it when we uh, have a Board of Health tune in. So we have a uh, meeting minutes. Uh, we have a few. So um, everybody, does anybody not have the meeting minutes that we are going to see if we can rattle through and get, uh, get accepted to finalize? Uh, November 17th is the first one. So we had an um, initial draft and it was tabled for editing. Uh, since then, we had... Uh, a revised draft emailed to the finance committee on the uh, 16th of December. Uh, does anybody not have that copy? So, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, we, we did start the, uh, the review of this draft um, meeting minutes and I think there was one section, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Kathleen, was it page 346 that you uh, had some edits on? Yes, if that if 346 is the last page, mine's just numbered page three. It okay. was probably third to last paragraph. It was the discussion about the uh, forensic audit and where that- Oh, okay. Came from. Yes. Okay, so I'm sorry, that's page 347. Okay. So does anybody have any other edits on page 345 or 346? I believe we already uh, reviewed those pages. So 
On page 347, as Kathleen said, the uh, paragraph is the fourth paragraph down on the third page in. And um, does anybody have any questions about how the new draft meeting minutes were modified? Okay, seeing none, I will then uh, entertain a motion to accept the meeting minutes from November 17th as revised. I move the minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, and further discussion. Okay, around the table, John Galvin. Yes. John Noon. Yes. Dave, I believe you were absent at this one. Uh, I think I was, yes. Uh, abstain. Okay. Uh, Kathleen? Yes. Al? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Ralph? Yes. Rosemary? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. I, I have Al absent at that meeting, so he has to abstain. Oh. <clears throat> oh. Sorry, Al. Yeah, you and Dave are both uh, absent. So, Al, you abstained. Sorry. Okay. No Same. problem. All right, we good with that one, Samantha? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the second one is um, the meeting minutes from uh, November 24th. Um, again, we had an initial draft and we tabled it for uh, additional information and it was emailed to the FinCom on January 4th, 2021. So for this uh, particular uh, meeting minutes, the modified or, or amended <laughs> section is on the second page and it's in red. Does anybody not have a copy of the revised edition of the November 24th, 2020 meeting minutes? Okay, so in, in the page 349, which is the second page in, uh, like I said, the, um, the new information or the revised information is in a red uh, font. Does anybody have any questions or comments about the content of the revised portion? Okay, seeing none. The, the only comment I would have is we have um, yet to receive a copy of that. Um, article from 2000, whatever it was, 2004, article 21 of 2004, which we were supposed to receive a copy of. So I don't know right. if, if we can get a copy of that at some point, just so that we can file yeah. it away with these minutes so that we have I don't a reference. Think that, that affects the acceptance of the meeting minutes, but I think it's a good point that we still need to get that information. So as, as the liaison to the town clerk, I'll reach out to Dawn and ask her if she can get that to us. Thank you very much. All right, so um, I will now then entertain a motion to accept the meeting minutes from November 24th, 2020 as amended. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Okay, all in favor, John Galvin. Yes. John Noon. Yes. Everyone was present for this meeting. Uh, Dave. Yes. Kathleen. Yes. Al. Yes. Chuck. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Rosemary. Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, thank you. That does it for that meeting minutes. And then we have one final meeting minutes from uh, December 8th. These were emailed to the Finance Committee on Monday, January 4th, 2020. One. 2021, our new year. So this is the first time reviewing these meeting minutes. They start on page 355. Um, so the first part of this uh, meeting was uh, Mary Beth Cotter joining the meeting to discuss the uh, request for a um, uh, fund transfer. Any uh, questions on page 355? Yes, I, I do have a revision on that. Okay. Um, on the uh, paragraph that's with Mary Beth 703, it states Mr. Galvin asked a question about the monthly service fee. Um, that is correct. 
Um, I, it was actually a two part question. Um, the second part of the question was, I asked if it was a union position and if the union had been contacted regarding this move. Um, and Mary Beth did pass the answer uh, question over to Lisa Green, whose answer was that, um, that because it was already a part-time position that the union didn't have a say on what was going on there. So I'd just like to have that reflected in the minutes that what my question was and that how Lisa Green answered it. Okay, so remember too, that this was the uh, first meeting when we brought this in, we also tabled it to another meeting. So no, some that, of the discussion did continue into the next meeting, right? Correct, it was, I did bring it up again in the, in the second meeting okay. as well, um, but right. I specifically asked the two part question in this meeting. Okay, so John, what would you like the sentence to additionally? Um, would you like just to that um, that I I asked if it was a union position, and Mary Beth said it was, and then I asked if the union had been made aware of the potential changes, and Miss Green said because it was uh, already a, a, not a it was a part time position already that the union did not have a say in the matter. Okay. Samantha, do you think you could insert that without having to table the meeting minutes? Yeah, I, I, I'm almost done. Oh, great. I thought Mary Beth said it wasn't because it's part-time. If it had been full-time, it would be that it didn't meet the minute, the um, hours to be a union position. That is, I think we need to review that because I believe Mary Beth said that it wasn't because it was part-time a union position because, but if it had been full-time, it would be. Does that sound familiar to you? For some reason, maybe it was in the second meeting. It was, yeah. So yeah, that, but, I, but I, I know she said something to that effect, not that it was a union position, but there were, you know. That information was given when there was a longer discussion in the meeting where we took this up for action. So you're gonna see that in the next meeting minutes, really of the 15th of December. Yep. Okay. Samantha, can you read back what you're gonna to add to that paragraph? Sure. Um, Mr. Galvin asked if there was a monthly service fee and how long the whatever money will cover the cost of completing payroll. Mr. Galvin, oh, sorry, I have my earbuds in. Mr. Galvin asked if, um, if the position was a union position and if the union was notified regarding the changes. Um, Ms. Carter stated that the union position was union. Ms. Green stated that because the position was already part-time, the union did not have to be notified. Is that good, John? That's perfect, thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you, John. Anything else on that first page? Okay, second page 356, there was one little typo. Um, so uh, down there, the three quarters of the way down where Ms. Keefe stated that all staff salaries, um, it, it talks about an expense lie. We, we certainly hope that department budget managers are being honest, but I think we should change that to line instead of lie. So we don't give the wrong impression. See that, Samantha? Yeah, I see it. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Anything on that page? Excellent. Oh, John New. At the, at the bottom of the uh, first long paragraph, I think the reference should be to FY21. Because I obviously the funds for 20 have been turned back really wouldn't be available to the recreation department, but 21, the current year that we're in, would have been part of the expenses last summer to have the pool open and in use had it been opened. Good point, John. Okay, so all simply changing 20 to 21. Right. Everybody in agreement? Yeah. Okay. Eagle Eye Noon. There you go, John. You know we hired you for a reason. <laughs> All right, we're on the third page, uh, 357. Um, just, a, just a little typo in the middle of that first paragraph. 
It said mostly recently. I think just take one of the LYs out of that. Most recently. That's the only thing I saw on that page. Samantha, you see that? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, I'm still looking. All right, so it says Ms. Wall, so Carter stated that the library established a strategic plan two years ago. Mostly recently, oh, okay. the library. Okay, thank you. I got it. Thank you. Any, yep. Anybody else? Anything? And the last page is just a signature page. I will now then entertain a motion to accept the meeting minutes from December 8th, 2020 as amended. So moved. We have a second. motion and a second. Further discussion? John Galvin. Yes. Let me see. We just said uh, absent was Dave. Uh, John Noon. Yes. Uh, Dave. Epstein. Kathleen. Yes. Al. Yes. Chuck. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Rosemary. Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, great. Rattled through those perfectly. So the only outstanding meeting minutes we have is just from the last the meeting of last week. So uh, thank you very much, Samantha, for the work that you do to get those meeting minutes. And I, um, I, I applaud the, the uh, committee for making sure that the meeting minutes uh, reflect uh, the conversations that were had. And it is the public record. So, John New. Uh, related to the, to the minutes and actually the activity in the minutes, um, not only was there the reference that John made um, to getting a copy of the Article 21 from 2004. But we also asked the acting town administrator to basically track back post 2004 to see if there were any changes made um, to that article, if there were any town meeting votes that either negated it or change that article in any way. Yeah, and I, I did follow up with her with that. She said that we're done. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, John, thank you for asking. Can we get that in writing uh, from either you or from the sure. from town administrator? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, very good. Thank you for that. Um, so back to the agenda, meeting minutes are taken care of. Um, under old business, we have our subcommittee reports, uh, placeholders, building facilities, capital expenditure committee. Dave, anything? No, we didn't meet. Uh, we were scheduled to meet on the 17th. We did not due to the storm. Uh, we figured it'd be best just to, even though it's remote, uh, some people still stay in the office. So we decided to cancel that. We have uh, water and sewer uh, planned for the 7th on Thursday to discuss their uh, capital warrant for the special town meeting uh, coming up in January. And that is it. Okay, excellent, thank you. So I would think at some point the, um, the a presentation would then come to the finance committee whose recommendations need to go on that special town meeting warrant for the articles. Um, Dave, how, how, how do you want to handle that? You're muted, Dave. You're muted. Uh, presentation from the facilities committee to finance? Well, it's either that or we get a presentation from the, um, the water sewer department and the board. Uh, did you say that they were meeting with your committee? Yeah, the meeting with our committee on Thursday. Um, yeah, you know, to, tell, to be honest, um, it was a bit of a surprise to our committee that uh, this article, that a special town meeting was being held. Um, so we were, uh, uh, we're kind of behind the eight ball. We have two meetings before January 27th. I don't know when, uh, the draft warrant isn't even drafted yet. So we don't know exactly what that language says. Um, so, and the other thing is that we don't, we don't have a drop dead date for the special town meeting warrant publication. So we don't know when 
the Board of Selectmen need our uh, recommendations for uh, when, the, when is the last date they need our recommendations for that uh, uh, publication in order to have it publicized in the, in the, uh, in the warrant. Well, uh, there's a lot going on um, in terms of trying to get this, trying to get all the information that we need before that. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if, we, if, if our committee is going to obtain all the information that we need. If we do, um, I, 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 I'd be willing to and, 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 and be willing to uh, invite the invitation to all members of that committee to attend the, the next finance committee. But if we don't have one next week, I don't know. Um, will will the, uh, you know? The question, I guess, is to the interim town administrators: Is will the following week still be within the deadline of, of publication in order to get all those uh, uh, deadlines done? Right. So I did have that conversation with the interim town administrator Lisa Green today. Um, that was one of the questions I had for in advance of this meeting. Was we haven't even seen the, the draft warrant. I mean, so her statement was that the draft warrant hasn't been finalized, that there were some legal issues that they were trying to work out with the wording of one of the articles. But for this committee, like Dave, like you said, I mean, you know, that meeting is coming up in a very short time. And historically, we have had an opportunity to review the articles to make recommendations. And, and usually on an article such as big as the one that is being proposed, um, you know, we have a presentation from that department, you know, so, so yeah, I, I agree. I, you know, there's a lot going on. I understand we're in transition with town administrators. Um, but yeah, we really, uh, I mean, as far as our recommendation, we theoretically could make our recommendation on town hall floor, uh, whether or not this committee, uh, approves, uh, recommends it, but usually that recommendation is um, is written into the warrant so so we, we should find out tomorrow uh, once selectmen meet tonight because that is the question I asked uh, Lisa Green to bring to the selectmen tonight so so thanks Dave for, for the update um, yeah well as soon as I get any information uh, of course we'll get it um, but there is a very real possibility that we should be looking for a, a joint meeting with uh, the water you know the commissioners and the water sewer department for a presentation to this board before special town meeting. So. Yeah. And, and I'd just like to interject my personal opinion is, is that, that, you know, once again, we're coming, we're, we're being faced upon a huge capital improvement and it's a, it's a hurry up and go. And I thought that this process was going to change. I don't blame water and sewer. But I figured that if this was in such dear need, dire need, which they've always said that the interim town administrator would have the foresight to, you know, notify depart, uh, board uh, committee member committee heads and say, hey, we have this coming down the pipeline with, within weeks. You know, let's let's uh, let me give you as much information that you need so we can get this thing done but again you know my, my 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 concern is that it's again one of those here's a big chunk of change that we want the town of whitman to spend and you don't have a lot of time to uh to uh to what i'm looking for evaluate it to evaluate it thank you yep i no, totally agree thank you dave anybody else on that topic uh kathleen is this article the reason that the special town meeting is being called? Is there anything else important that needs to be dealt with in January? As far as I know, there are other uh, articles on the special town meeting warrant, uh, but they are small, certainly much smaller in nature. Um, than they, but they no doubt will need the recommendations for finance committee. So, the, the only thing that I saw uh, uh, was that was going to be for consideration was a, an outstanding bill from last year. Which requires, you know, due, due to the fiscal year issue, requires uh, uh, a, a vote from town meeting. And how much is that outstanding bill, Dave? Do you know? Yeah, it was a plowing uh, snow plow, like three thousand, four thousand dollars. This is ridiculous. Well, we'll have more information as soon as I know. I will certainly get the 
committee on board. We do have the uh, Board of Health uh, here tuned in. Welcome, Happy New Year. Thank, Thank you very much for tuning in and um, making your uh, budget presentation. Um, so we'll, we'll go around the board uh, and just introduce um, all of the members of the Finance Committee. We'll interrupt what we were working on and allow you to make your budget presentation. Also welcome, Ken. Uh, thank you for tuning in as well. Um, we, we, we did, I did talk to Ken a little bit today and so, to see if he could pop in and give us a little bit of an update. So Ken, if you don't mind just uh, sticking around while we uh, uh, meet with the uh, Board of Health, if you wanna pop out and pop back in, that's totally up to you. Okay, so around the board, John Galvin. Um, we have John Noon, Dave Canero, oh. Kathleen Otina, Al Cafferty, Chuck Colby, Ralph Mitchell. Yes. Rosemary Connolly. And um, my, myself, Rick Anderson, we welcome you again. If you want to do a quick interrupt uh, introduction, um, let me just say this before you do get started. We uh, thoroughly appreciate the work that the Board of Health has done in this pandemic. You guys have definitely been on the front lines. Um, and the work that you do um, obviously affects every one of the citizens of this town. So again, we, we, we offer you our sincerest thanks for the work that you do and will continue to do into the new year. So with that, I'll let you go right in and um, talk about your budget. By the line, you wanna go by line, Rick? Or do you have questions or what do you wanna do? Yep. So typically, um, you can go right in with your, um, we are using our article two, uh, the mm -hmm. article two that you submitted your budget in your budget uh, line items go from line 196 to 209. Mm -hmm. And if you want to just start with uh, anywhere you want, uh, 196, 197. Um, I do understand that you, you know, you had a, a couple of changes that you submitted. We do have um, uh, uh, several copies of your submitted budget. One was from the 29th and one was from the 31st, I believe is the one that we're working on. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So go right ahead. Okay. Okay. Um, line number 197 remains the same, 68125. That's for the health inspector department head. The mileage remains the same, 1443. This is where we come to a change here, the clerical. The clerical, we're combining the, let's see. Well, we're eliminating. We're eliminating, okay. We're eliminating, well, we're actually. Okay. I, think, I think we had explained it on the budget yeah. that we, we do not need it, the recording secretary line or the additional clerical line if we can take those amount of monies and put them towards the clerical and give the clerical more hours, which is definitely needed. Right. And it only doesn't make, it makes a small increase with $1,407. We really feel as though the administrative assistant in this office needs another eight hours to do the job correctly. Uh, it's been a struggle uh, squeezing the hours in here. And it, it came to a point where people were working without pay, basically, uh, because we just had too little money to work with for that particular position. We do have a new administrative assistant here, Elaine retired. It's Dina Amato. And she's a, a fabulous worker. She does a great job. And she's very much into this department. She really enjoys it. Uh, we feel as though another eight hours wouldn't be asking too much. As we mentioned before, it just adds 1407 to that line. To the, to the bottom yes, line. To the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's. Do you understand what we're doing, what we're trying to do, Rick? Um, yes, your notes were, um, we have the notes that were provided. Mm -hmm. uh, so proposing a, a four seven hour days for the clerical position yes. right. at 33,539 to accommodate the workload. Right. Um, as other departments have a four day week, mm -hmm. so you would th then similarly be. And reducing the recording secretary line, line 200 in the amount uh, of 3,642 and the additional clerical line 208 in the amount of, as you said, 1,400 to mm -hmm. zero mm -hmm. and moving this amount of 5,042 to the clerical line, um, which would bring it from 27,000 
to 32132. Yes. So, uh, and then line 199 increased by the 1407 mm -hmm, to meet exactly. the request. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. We're down to the, well, our biggest problem, one of our biggest, <laughs> one of our biggest problems is the visiting nurse. Now we have a public health. public health nurse. We have her working 10 hours. We hired her for 10 hours originally. Uh, we had to hire another nurse to come in because of the workload with contact tracing in Maven. Uh, basically, we're looking for 25 hours to make things work properly for the nurses. Uh, I think that's really cutting it close myself. We're just, they're in overload right now. It's basically not just public nurse. She does have a TB case that she's working on where she does have to visit a home. But most of the time is being spent right now on the contact tracing in Maven. As you know, we have a numerous amount of cases in town. And uh, each case takes sometimes three to four hours because of contacting everyone's family members, their family members who met with other people during the holidays, unfortunately, this has become a real issue. And so for every case, it's three or four hours spent on every case that comes through. Um, the girls are really in overload over there. We're looking to actually put someone else on board too. We're presently paying them out of the CARES Act. Yes. But we don't know when that will end. Yeah, from what I understand, if the, the expenses uh, haven't been billed uh, by the end of December 31st, uh, there'll, be, there'll be no re reimbursement. Go ahead, Rosemary. That's extended. Okay. That's been extended. extended yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, okay. If it is COVID related, it should go under the CARES Act. It, you know, we, we should yeah. be billing if this is COVID related because, you know, we've expanded this department over the last few years. We've as far as growth in this particular the public health, which we're lucky that we did do it right before the COVID, but in a sense, we're gonna do it a, another year and we really have to, you know, have reasons and go in. It just can't, you know, if, if it's COVID, then it should be CARES Act money. We should go for first. Yeah. And then if we need well, to expand, yeah. Yeah. then we That's bring forward all those reasons and go forward with that. But, but mixing the two, I think is not, you know, it, I don't think it's appropriate, that's all. Well, you've been in contact with Ken, uh, the uh, accountant, to get billing into COVID reimbursement, yes. correct? Yes. Yeah. 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 And so. I've also applied for uh, some COVID grants uh, through the MAHD, and uh, we've used that money also. It was uh, two checks of 6,500, then another two checks of... 1200 uh, and then the latest one for 2600 so we've spent all this on COVID related and supplies and nursing so it's, it's all been coming out of there right okay I can uh, John New. if CARES ends where do we go from there are, are you expecting not to be able to make it through with the current 2021 budget you have we don't know we haven't used the 12 yet. we have 12 grand left and that's it we're waiting to be sure that we have money if the CARES Act stops. And I, I, this is my first year after 40 years away uh, of being on, on the committee. When it comes to visiting nurse services, um, is there any reimbursement um, to the town from insurances? Not that everybody should be billed, but anybody that has an insurance that would cover a visiting nurse service, is anything coming back to the town? No. 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 And it's, it's really, they need to change that line. It's really public health nurse. Right. Should yeah, I heard you make that, that notation, line 202. Yeah. So instead of being called visiting nurses, I know that that was done away with, more or less. Yeah, um, yeah, yes. And, and now it's, it should be referred to as public health nurses. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. yeah. So okay. it's, a different, it's a different animal, John. It's mm -hmm. not the visiting nurses that we knew from years ago. It's, it's kind of a, a, you know, a, a new, kind of a new program, if you will. Thank you. Okay, any other questions for the Board of Health? So, um, and as far as presentations to the Board of Selectmen, 
you've made them aware of the challenges that you're facing and yeah. the um, you know the increased workloads and that type of thing because um, <clears throat> just generally speaking your budget now is, is a 7.6 increase over the uh, last year's budget mm -hmm. and I don't know if you're familiar with our kind of guidelines here but for the finance committee to recommend a balanced budget we need to make uh, we need to uh, kind of convey to departments that they need to get in under two and a half percent. Understandably, the health, the Board of Health, the health department is facing um, numerous uh, challenges in this COVID pandemic. So we're not suggesting that, you know, your budget is in any way in jeopardy of being reduced, but just understand we have a budget deficit that we need to close. That's all. So again, I, I, I appreciate the work that you do. I would just say that, you know, going forward, not only should you convey all of your challenges as they come up to the Board of Selectmen, um, but you should also maybe look ahead as we look into the future here and the, where we want to be in the next five to 10 years and, and look at the, the Board of Health and the Health Department. You know, you have some fresh eyes there. Um, and we would like to see that, you know, we're working towards a strategic plan. So any ideas that you could come up uh, with that would, you know, be a benefit to the citizens of the town. That, that's all. Mm -hmm. We're just asking you to keep an eye on the future. Okay. Okay. Sounds so good. We are. Yeah, we are doing that. Right. Looking to the future, no COVID. <laughs> I know it's it's the day-to-day the -day tasks that you guys are, are uh, encountering is, is extraordinary. So. Any other questions, Kathleen? Uh, okay, so I heard you say that you have someone working virtually without pay from time to time because there's so much work. And I don't want that to happen. If someone is coming to work and doing a job that this town needs done, that person should be paid. And we have other departments that are not shy about requesting reserve fund transfers because they needed additional clerical help. So I hope someone is documenting the hours that this person is putting in without pay with the uh, idea that down the road, you may well be requesting a reserve fund transfer if for no other reason to highlight the fact that someone is doing a job that should be being paid for that work and has been willing to work without pay. It's, it's not right, it shouldn't happen. Good point, Kathleen. Just keep in mind that not only reserve fund transfers are an option, but the line item transfers are also. We do not have an unlimited resource as far as a reserve fund. It's actually been tapped quite a bit this particular fiscal year. So, but again, if you keep that information uh, stream moving, and in, 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 like I said, the challenges that you face should be um, you know, forwarded up the chain to uh, the town administrator. Uh, I know we're in uh, flux right now, but the interim town administrator is definitely the person that you should be getting this information to. So that as Kathleen said, we're not having people working uh, uh, on their own expense. So, uh, Rosemary. Just about the, the CARES Act, I would expect that your department would be receiving or making a lot of requests for the CARES Act. You'd be one of the departments that um, should be receiving a good amount of money considering our demographic. Um, ha what has, have you received everything? Has everything that you've requested been accepted? What have you? Yes, um, we've asked what we've received, yes. You, okay, have you asked for the pay for this extra uh, staff member? Uh, for this extra help during this time? Have you requested that? She basically, no name given. She basically said, she, I'm working from home. There are so many cases to do. I need to do this. And I'm in a situation where I put myself into this job saying I could do it in 10 hours. I'm gonna do my 10 hours and I don't want to get anything for it. This is how she felt about it. She's been a nurse for many, many years and this is just her mindset. So she feels as though we're gonna get through this hopefully within the next year, but we will do something about this to pay her for her time if she continues to stay on. This has been a very tough job for the nurses and it's a situation where we never know how long they're gonna be able to do it. It's very, very stressful. It's, we're in a tough place right now with the girls. We are. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. Rosemary, that answer your question. 
What was your question? Oh, my, my, my question to you, Rick, was you were talking about line item transfer. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't do that till May 1st, right? That's correct. Yeah, okay. I'm just saying, you know, I just don't want you to think that there's only one way to win here. That's all. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want, yeah. I, more or less, I was more calling attention to the limited amount that we have in the yes, reserve just, fund yeah, for are. transfers. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions, Chuck? Yeah. Hi, ladies. Uh, hey, I was just curious. So, um, line so two hundred, line two hundred, recording secretary. So, uh, basically, uh, it's like eliminating that. It looks like um, in the past was was that Elaine was the administrative assistant, the one who did your uh, recording. Yes, and for the past year and a half. We have not been meeting at night. We've been meeting in, during the day. Oh, okay. So we didn't, that was what that was set up for because we had to come back at night for a meeting and then transcribe and all of that. But now we're meeting during the day during the regular working hours. Okay. So that has become part of the work day. The work day. Yeah, so it, it kind of makes sense right. that money was there. Was so, right. so, so that was, basically that could be uh, yeah swung over there since she's working anyways. Right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry. I was kicked off and I missed the answer that you gave me. All CARES related thing affects additional staff. All of those things are being submitted, correct? Is that what? Yes, yes. Looks like she's kicked off again. Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. We're not gonna answer a question a third time. Everything we've requested, we have received. Okay, thank you I would very just much. Say, are you expecting that to go beyond the CARES, uh, beyond COVID and a continuation of those hours? Mm -hmm. Is that the expectation? Or so it's- it, Is COVID is over? Well, I, we, don't, we, don't see this, we don't see this ending anytime soon. And we're hoping that the COVID, the COVID money continues to command the CARES Act. In the meantime, we're hoping we have enough money to pay these people and to keep this going. We really don't have much of a choice, but they have jobs to do and the numbers are just coming in daily. Yeah. COVID was yeah. just um, extended a year, you, I, I believe? Yes, the CARES that Act. That CARES Act was just yes. extended a year, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, do they, does the CARES Act give so much money to an area though? I mean, will that money get- Yeah, they, the they, they've, they've, they've um, increased the amount, I believe in the, in the last, uh, for distribution and other things. So yes, they do, but we haven't come close to that amount okay. <laughs> when I go and look it up. So yeah. yeah, that was one of the questions we have for our accountant who should be coming back into the meeting. Yeah. Uh, Dave. Uh, Rosemary makes a good point. Uh, I know the Board of Selectmen have discussed uh, creating a line item associated with COVID uh, to avoid, partly to avoid uh, the situation that we're in, what we may face here where uh, they're anticipating additional funds due to, due to a temporary situation. However, in, and once that temporary situation goes, goes away, then, you know, the, the concern is that you, then you have, uh, uh, uh exaggerated budgets. So they, they have, they have had that discussion. I don't know where they stand at this point. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Dave. That is, that is a good point. Yeah. And before we call it an exaggerated budget, because I know we've had things before, we just need reasons and data to back up why things are increasing. That's all. Um, we respect everything that everyone does and it shouldn't be seen, but, but we've got to make sure that money's spent well and accurately, that's all. Well, if, if you prepare for us, if you increase the budget for a temporary situation- You are correct. It just goes away. That would do that, you are right. Yes. Okay, uh, welcome, Don. Um, we're pretty much wrapping up the discussion with the uh, Board of Health. Is there anything that you wanted to present? Um, nope. Okay. I got my thing. My thing said eight o'clock, but I guess on my on Alexis's email it said eight o'clock. So I guess I yes. just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I apologize. We did start. Uh, we started the presentation a little bit sooner, um, but we have you know excellent information. I think we know. Uh, a lot more about the challenges that the Board of Health is facing and the uh, um, looking at the budget uh, going into fiscal 22. And, um, you know, you, you definitely have your work cut out for you. We, we again, thank right. you for the work that you do. I'll, I'll have to watch the um, replay. There you go. <laughs> All right, anybody else, any other questions? 
for the board of health. All right, I'm leaving. Bye. Bye. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you very much. Happy New Year. We thank look forward you. to thank getting you. an update. If you have any questions at all, feel free to get a hold of, 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 of me or um, the Finance Committee is available to um, give you an update as we move forward too. Chuck Colby is your um, uh, liaison as well, so you can uh, get a hold of him if you have questions. Okay, okay. great. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, that moves us um, back into the old business, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we did get some information from uh, Dave on the Building Facilities Capital Expenditure Committee regarding the Regional Agreement Amendment Committee. Um, I did ask uh, when the district was uh, meeting with us if there was any intention for that uh, uh, board to be uh, reconvened and was told that there was no plan at all. Um, in the most recent uh, school committee meeting, uh, the chair of that committee uh, stated that there would be no uh, meeting convened until um, the, which I thought was unusual, but he said that the, um, uh, the, what is it? The uh, deregionalization committee uh, made a recommendation. So he's, he has not, he's not committed to having a meeting until the Hanson Deregionalization Committee has made a finding. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. And I figured I'd pass that on to the board. As far as the Middle School Building Committee, John, Galvin. Um, I'm told that we are planning to have a meeting this coming Monday. Um, I do not have an agenda on it yet. Um, so I received an email on December 30th that we were scheduling a meeting for this coming Monday. So I guess I can update you next week on that. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, so the budget also, I mean, we, we are now almost to the point where we have um, a lot of information. I mean, we, uh, we still have yet to uh, get the board of selectmen uh, and get their budget. Well, as I mentioned, the uh, Board of Selectmen are finalizing or introducing uh, the salary negotiations with our new town administrator on Monday. Whether that will be completed um, in a week um, is, is conjecture. So we don't really know when we can meet and get that budget um, discussion underway. So that would really hold up our, our work on the budget until we get all the final numbers from each department. Um, and as you heard from Tom Hickey, uh, his final numbers are going to be at the end of January as well. So I think we've made a really good start uh, for the fiscal 22 budget season by getting information from each department. But I think it's important for the committee members uh, to go back and take a look at the budget presentations that we have been given and look at some of the numbers that are on this article too, as far as the uh, totals. Um, and, you know, we, we, we have to start making, making some difficult discu uh, discussions and decisions as we move closer to town meeting. Dave. Has anyone discussed uh, with these department heads uh, about the, um, the Board of Selectmen's approach of only uh, increasing their budget by uh, no, no more than two and a half percent? Well, I've been having, trying to have that conversation every time one of them comes in, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't seem to be really taking hold. Uh, I don't know. It, it, maybe it seems as though uh, there is the uh, thought that there's some, some money coming that uh, we, we're not aware of. I don't, I'm, I'm not really sure. But I would say that most of or some of the budgets that we have been given are really based in reality. There is absolutely no way that we could recommend some of these um, Article Two line items and, and, and expect to have a balanced budget. Uh, I think, well, I, I guess like my follow-up question on that is, is, has the interim town administrator notified the Board of Selectmen that department heads are requesting budgets greater than 2.5%? Not that I'm aware of, but this is, should be something that's on our joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen. And that is one of the things that I have put on uh, for a uh, an agenda item is to talk about 
where these budgets are coming in and where we need them to be. Yeah. So, so we have a, a we have a, a roadmap, so to speak, with the matted recommendations, and we 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 got to get we got to get everybody on board here at some point. So, yep. Go ahead, Rosemary. So the Madden recommendations assumed that these, uh, I guess I'm going back to the override and, I, um, and I, we have people here on the override committee that stated that we would be doing an override this year. If these departments need this money, will it go into a collective override? What is the plan? And if so, should we say to them, if we do an override, the expectation is that you do it to the point that you can carry on at two, you know, two and a half percent maximum or five percent maximum for the schools uh, each year moving forward. Um, that would be the expectation. I mean, how are we handling that, or has that just been swept off the table? Um, last year that you said you needed an override, and then this year you push it to this year. Then, so what's going on with that? Anybody? <laughs> Who, who you directed the question to? Anybody that has any information about that, but particularly John Galvin and Dave Cadero were on that override committee. So well, they I believe they're still on that committee. Well, I'm still anybody. on that committee. So I would It was still on that committee, but yet the committee hasn't met in, you know, over almost a year now. So, um, you know, I think the recommendation from an override from Mr. Madden didn't include two key items. Um, the first key item that it didn't include was COVID, um, you know, and, and the feasibility of being able to ask for an override during the COVID time. Um, the second thing it didn't take into consideration was going to a full statutory method, um, which is also something that was not considered in that. So, you know, he did say we, that it wouldn't make a difference. It was considered. It was you, actually, he said okay, that. Okay, thank you, Rosemary. Um, the, the question really is, you know, could we do an override now or should we do an override now? In my opinion, my opinion, um, you know, we certainly should consider it. Um, but again, my, back to the COVID line, do we really honestly think that the town of Whitman is going to entertain any type of override right now? Um, and in my opinion, it just does not seem like a reality. Um, what, you know, Obviously, the deficit numbers show that we need, we've need we got to do something. Um, so, you know, but I don't know that that's actually our decision to make anyway. The, the, you know, I think that has to come from the selectmen to, to decide if we're going to go for an override. Yeah. We make well, that I, recommendation. Just that's personally, I think we also should be taking a hard look at these budget submissions and taking a, a hard line on some of these expenses that have been presented. I think... We, we have an obligation. Those are some of the things that we can do. And I think in the next couple of weeks, we should look back at some of these budget presentations and sort out what maybe is uh, something that um, could be uh, modified. Dave. Uh, just, I don't have the Madden report in front of me, but did, 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 I don't think the Madden report specified that an override, he's, he recommended an override for fiscal year 22. Am I, am I correct? I think that, that what his recommendation was, it, it, if, if it wasn't, if it didn't happen in the next year, it would probably be required in the next two or three years, I think is what he said. Um, so it, it wasn't a recommendation. It was more or less a projection, uh, I think. All right. I, I'd just like to hold uh, 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 Rosemary's comment of, of, of next year and your comment of sometime and, and be able to input the actual comment from Madden so we have a factual report in, in our meeting minutes. Is that okay with everyone? Sure. All right, I'll, I'll find it and send it over to, uh, I'll send it to everyone and, and CC, uh, CC Samantha. Thank you. Okay, so um, on the back onto the agenda, uh, budget. So we just talked about the budget and then what we need to do. Annual town report. Did anybody receive the draft? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Okay. So again, it's a draft. If there's that something, was very good. Thank you. If there's something somebody wants to include, uh, John Noon did point out a couple of things. 
Uh, one was Rosemary's name was spelled wrong. Sorry, Rosemary. I put an E instead of the second O. Uh, and um, so uh, also, I think, John, one of your points was that um, in discussion uh, of or reporting of the uh, assessment, um, you made a suggestion that instead of referring to it as a malfeasance, you would have preferred uh, some lesser uh, uh, adjective, I guess. You're muted, I think. John, what 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 was your recommendation? To refer to to the mistake as mistake. an error, yeah. um, only because. Now I don't have the the long history of debate um, in within the town departments involved, but um, the suggestion seemed to be that this was an ongoing issue as far as resolving who was responsible and how this was all playing out. And malfeasance, to state it was a malfeasance at this point seemed a little bit too much. John, just so you know, somebody lost their job because of this. So it, it was a malfeasance. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think it, it's being overstated at all. Uh, so somebody okay. lost their job. So. So again, like I said, I, you know, it wasn't in an effort to pass judgment. It was more or less uh, just a, you know, it was a 2020 event. And the fact that the, you know, the general, the general public is, just became aware of, of it uh, in 2020. I think more. the finance committee also was told that it was un, completely unknown and nobody knew about it. And then I think sent minutes that if you, if anybody got a chance to review them, they were sent by Mr. Forth that it showed one year that it was actually used correctly, that we did use the, uh, did do the- uh, I, I, You know what, no, Rosemary, I don't, I don't want to get into a big discussion and start down that road. I, but I, I mean, I, it, it supports malfeasance yeah. is what I'm saying. Okay, thank you. John, you comfortable with that now? Uh, like I said, uh, you, you, yep, okay, great. All right, so um, we don't have to approve it now. Like I said, if you guys want to take a think about it, uh, we have plenty of time. That doesn't have to be submitted for another couple of weeks. So, so with that, we have Ken back in. Uh, Ken, welcome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Much more secure location this time. Sorry, I had to jump out earlier. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, I just figured maybe it was a good opportunity where we haven't seen your face in a little while. If you wanted to give the board a little bit of an update on uh, where uh, the um, Article 2 uh, information, any updates or um, information. Uh, we just discussed the Board of Health. Um, obviously, they had quite a few conversations with you in order to develop a, a budget yep. for fiscal 22. So it sounds like there's, 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 there's a work in progress here still. So I would suggest that maybe you know you are going to be an important resource for them as they have a significant amount of COVID related expenses that should be getting reimbursed to subsidize their budget. A ton, yeah. Um, yeah and with the COVID, uh, with the CARES Act being extended for another year, that was a, a major blessing um, because they really need it. Right. Um, given what's been going on. So one of the things that was on the agenda for um, um, a discussion with you too was to see where the deficit, uh, if if any of the COVID related expenses didn't get reimbursed in time for the December 31st. But now I guess that's a moot point, right? Because the clock is still ticking. It is, yep. Um, so it, it more or less extends the clock to next December 30th, I believe. Um, but with all the money having been dispersed, well, I shouldn't say all of it, um, majority of the money having already been dispersed, it kind of favors those that still have money to spend, uh, which fortunately we do. So we're able to use what we have on um, situations like this with what we're dealing with, with the Board of Health. Um, and there's, there should, there appears to be enough left to support them for what they need um, and then some. Uh, so I'm very thankful for that and I'm sure they are too. So do you see yourself working with the Board of Health a little bit more as far as their budget goes and uh, one-on-one? -on -one? How is that going to work? Um, if they need the help, I'll, I'll offer it to them. 
Um, I know they have come up to me a few times for different questions for what they could do with the budget. Um, I know they had they had come to me about expanding the clerical position. Um, and I think there were a couple of lines that they were going to either reduce or remove completely in order to help fund it, which I think is what they had presented to you tonight. Um, the visiting nurses line, I think, was increased, which I think is a kind, I don't know, I don't know, I didn't get the background as to why that was increased. I don't know if that's a, a COVID reaction, just in case for next fiscal year. Um, yeah, they did spell it out in the notes uh, on what their intentions were, so. Okay. But and given the budget the did, did get increased by 7.6% overall when you plugged it into our article too, you know, so, you know, that, yeah. that's a concern, you know, so uh, any, any, any opportunity to defray some of that budget expense, um, you know, uh, ongoing budget expenses, I guess, so. Yeah, and with and given the turnover that the department is going to have too, um, it it might not be a bad idea for me to help them if they need it. Okay. All right. Um, any uh, questions from the board uh, for Ken regarding the budget? Rosemary. Regarding cares, it's regarding the cares act. You had stated that we still had money left over. How much money do we have left over in the um, cares? I am, I'm estimating that we uh -huh. have a little over 540,000 left. Um, and then they're supposed to replenish it for more money soon, correct? With the extension, they have more money coming. So there's, they distributed a phase six in December and the school district got a chunk of that. Um, uh -huh. There has been no indication of a phase seven. Um, their website shows that not all of the money has been distributed, but there's only like less than 10% left, I believe. Um, I don't know what that's earmarked for. Um, we haven't been hinted at getting any more, um, but the estimate that I'm using based on what um, the school district sent me back in November, based on what they've spent, um, it, there's a little bit more that there should be a little bit more than 540,000 left for us um, to spend. Okay, I, I'm only going with a conversation I had with the commissioner. Basically, if something passed, we'd get more money in, um, and that bill did pass, so it might not be out yet, but we'll see what happens. Thank you. Okay, John Galvin. Yeah, I, uh, Ken, I have a quick question for you. Um, <clears throat> the recent article two that you sent out in the treasurer collector, um, I noticed that you have up the line, uh, line 52, which is the expense for the payroll. Um, Mary Beth had mentioned that there was gonna be a cutback in that in one of those positions that should save about $13,000, I thought she said, and I don't see that reflected um the the payroll clerical i think maybe it might be i'm not sure which line item it's going to be um but thirteen thousand is thirteen thousand so i don't know if you can follow up with her and maybe let us know which line she's going to adjust when she brings back that position to i think she's bringing it back to 18 hours or something like that so i don't know if it's line item 49 clerical payroll or whichever one it is, but I didn't see that reflected. If you could just follow up with her on that and let us know. And we, yep, that's, we'll take 13,000 any way we can get it. Agreed. Um, I, I'm 99% sure that that's the line that's gonna change too. Um, so once I can get an exact figure from her, I'll update that. All right, thank you. Okay, so uh, tonight we did uh, get a presentation from uh, Social Votech um, looking more or less, if I'm correct, at a 1.8% increase uh, projection. Uh, also, their expenses for um, transportation will be going up, not down. So that line, 52,000, will be probably uh, going up as well. And, and we still have yet to have a budget pre presented from the selectmen. So that's another one that's outstanding. And currently, um, Ken, that, correct me if I'm wrong, we're in the neighborhood of 780,000 underwater right, with our budget right now. 
Uh, after we factor in, if we factor in the, the new Voktek number, that sounds about right. Yeah. What, what Votec number? Well, the, Tom Hickey mentioned the fact that 1.8%, is that- that was, his, that was his budget going up. That's not what was gonna go up to us. Oh, okay. That's what his budget was going up. Okay. So we don't- Do you know what that dollar figure would be, John? How do we know? He doesn't have chapter 70. He won't know, he won't be able to give us any numbers until the January. January. Right. Yeah. So okay. we should right. leave, it, leave it where it is and- Leave it where it is. Yeah, I mean, we don't know. Okay. All right. So we have that line level funded right now. We correct. do. Yeah, right. that is correct. So we we likely won't be able to change that till the end of the month. That's correct. Okay. All right. Um, so one of the discussions we had, Ken, was the fact that you know we're you know we're, we're facing a structural deficit. We have to go back in and look at some of these budget presentations and some of these yep. submissions and line items and uh, make some difficult choices here at this point. You know. Um, obviously, we'd like you to be part of that process. Um, so yep. I would think that uh, once we get the final budget presentation from the Board of Selectmen we'll, and the numbers from the uh, South Shore Votech, we'll be able to start, at least start start at it. Yes, Dave. I don't think, I don't think those, uh, 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 it's not our responsibility. I think we should go back to the department head and say, hey, Board of Selectmen, Agreed to the MAD, all the MAD recommendations in the Madden report that said uh, uh, a two and a half percent increase per budget um, it, without ex extenuating circumstances, and let them manage their own budget. At the end of the day, they should only be coming coming to us without two and a half. What's what's the sense of having having the Madden report, a board of selectmen's vote to to follow it, if the board if the department heads aren't gonna aren't gonna adhere to it, or if the board of selectmen isn't gonna back it up, right? Right, uh, Kathleen. Well, I think John Galvin had his hand raised. Go ahead, first. Kathleen. You can go first. I want to point out that although the uh, superintendent of the regional school uh, department did show up for our meeting on December fifteenth, we don't have a budget from him. Um, he he graciously agreed to come to the, our meeting that night, but there was no information. There was no budget documentation. And there's still that huge number staring us in the face. And that's the $401,000 non-mandated busing that for whatever reason, no one wants to talk about except some of us on the Whitman Finance Committee. It's an expense that we do not have to make. There are very few communities, I can't even come up with one locally, that provides free busing to students who are not entitled to free busing. And if we're underwater to the tune of $700,000, why $400,000 is not, you know, with neon signs speaking out to leaders in this community, go after this, find out how much it actually costs to bus our kids because we're paying for busing for children who aren't even going to school, are not even sitting on a seat on the bus. We're paying for empty seats. So there's no documentation from the school department on how they came up with the uh, cost of the $401,000. Nothing has been adjusted. I think there are 500 kids who are completely remote and 300 something of those are Whitman students. So that $400,000 is something that we absolutely have to attack both from it's money sitting there that is not mandated. And it's a, I understand the selectmen are loath to, uh, to touch it, but it's not going to impact the quality of education. If we're gonna make cuts someplace else in let's say the school department budget, for example, that will impact the quality of the day-to-day -day experience of the kids. Getting them to school on a bus does not. If anything, they're better off not being on a bus if they're close enough to walk. So I don't want the, the uh, non-mandated busing dollar figure to go sort of slide past us one more time. We have to aggressively address that at some time in a future meeting. Okay, John first and then Rosemary. Um, I, I definitely agree with Kathleen on that. It's certainly a large number. Um, just to follow up on Dave's comment a little bit, um, you know, I think Madden, I mentioned this before we had our break, you know, Madden's recommendations are what they are, but aside from attacking something like the non-mandated busing line, 
chances are we're not going to be able to maintain those Madden two and a half percent across the board and cut this deficit. Um, you know, it's just, it, it, you know, aside from a possible override, which is obviously something that needs to be considered, um, you know, to cut $750,000 of the deficit and say everybody can go to two and a half percent, it's just not realistic. Aside from cutting something like a big line, like non-mandated busing. So, you know, I think as we go forward, we can keep throwing out Madden report, but, you know, aside from discussing overrides or, uh, you know, other things like that, like non-mandated busing, that's not really feasible either this year. You know, I mean, it's a lot of money and getting everybody to two and a half percent doesn't cut the deficit enough. Can, can I just use one more example with the police budget? The police budget presented the uh, skin in the game in their budget this year. Every other year we have managed to, uh, you know, negotiate a little bit and $122,000, I believe, is those unused shifts. That's not a minimal amount of money. That's right. not something that the finance committee can't do to help lessen the deficit in this budget for fiscal. Well, if we, if we were to level fund the police. I'm not saying two, level fund the police. Well, that's $256,000. That's how much their increase is right now. Um, you know, sure. and I'm not saying doing that either, but I mean, that's still, even if you were to take those budgets and if you brought that down to two and a half percent, it's still, it's not going to save you enough to erase the deficit. No, you know? so but I'm, what I'm saying kind of my, working, my discussion we should be point. working from both ends. That's all I'm saying. Right. Is we have, we have information that was given to us in these budget meetings that we should be using to make recommendations uh, back to those committees, back to the department managers to say, this isn't the year to put the unused shifts back in your budget or whatever. I'm only using that as one example. I'm not beating up on the police budget. I'm just using that as one example of one of the things that this committee can do to close that gap a little. That's all I'm saying. Rosemary. I, I, I want to go back to there's two things. I do think we, I do think that nobody on this committee should be throwing out the Madden recommendations. I don't think anybody here should be sit, should say, oh, we spent, we spent a lot of money for somebody to come in and, and recommend us. Nobody here should be for one second thinking that uh, we should throw those out the window, that, that we should take them quite seriously. Ad additionally, I think if, again, I'm going to go back to the minutes that were emailed it in those minutes it goes over when we first implemented the non-mandating um, busing and the amounts have inflated the amount that we pay when they first agreed to do that was much smaller the amount to pay for for students that we don't legally have to bus is much higher it's a bigger bill um, so i think it deserves a, a different conversation uh, whatever commitments that were made or thoughts that were made back then were made with a much lower price tag. So looking at where it started does help understand why we have to change it. They may not have made that same decision if it was $400,000 then, that's what I'm saying. And, and if I could just throw one more example out there, when we sent out the budget mailing, Ken, you remember when we sent the email, the email was very specific to level fund salaries. That wasn't done by every department. That also is inflating this budget, right? To the tune of what? Could you project? Um, just the department heads or everybody? Well, the, that was the recommendation, right? Wasn't it? Um, level fund it, salary? It, it was, Rick. That was something that was on my mind. And while Ken's looking that up, uh, I was, I was going to bring that up that uh, obviously that some of the department heads did not level fund salaries. You know, we, we, we're talking about not being able to do overrides, COVID. Uh, one of the other elephants in the room, uh, you know, the wage freeze was fro thrown around last year. Um, hard, hard decisions, hard negotiations coming up. People may not want to hear it, but we're not, we're not making money here. We're not, money's not falling off trees. We have a lot of costs that we can't we can't change. One thing we can change is maybe hold the line and maybe uh, since Whitman 
uh, is a poorer town, getting more chapter 70 maybe finally, I think some of the taxpayers uh, might might uh, look at things a little differently and say, hey, we made some hard decisions and we held the line on some salaries for a couple of years or a year, even a year, I think, a year uh, thrown in all the unions. Well, it was around a million dollars, I believe, that was, the number was thrown around last year, 800,000, 900,000. That's with all the districts and all the, all the people. So um, that's something that stuck out in my head the last few years. I don't know how we're going to get out of this. Uh, and I know it's not the end all. But, you know, it, it might save things for a year or two until things get better. So I just think people have to make some hard decisions. Good point, Thank Chuck. You. Thank you. So just getting back to our outline for our joint meeting with selectmen. So I'm going to throw out some uh, agenda topics. And then I want the Finance Committee to give me anything else that they want to put on that agenda. But at the top of my list is pay to ride. Um, uh, it should be part of the discussion. Number two is the audit with the Whitman Hanson Regional School District. Number three is the selectman's budget that we still don't have. Um, four is the capital plan. Five is the strategic plan. Those are things that you know we should be we should be finalizing in fiscal 21. And the other one is the chapter 90 funding. Rosemary, you touched on it a little bit about. You know, and I put that in the annual report as well for this particular year because you know it's something that we asked for um, a little bit more information, a little more transparency into why we're not getting the amount of accepted roads and thereby creating an additional amount of chapter 90 funding availability for the town. So, so those are six topics. Um, I would certainly entertain any other uh, agenda topics, John. Oh, we just talked about it, the deficit and a possible override. I mean, I don't know how we can talk with the selectmen and not talk about the huge deficit we have right now and how we're going to address it. Okay. You know? um, anybody else? Like I said, uh, this is a kind of a, a draft. I don't think we're going to be able to meet with them uh, jointly uh, next week, just based on the fact that we still don't have a, um, a, a town administrator on board yet. So, <clears throat> John New. Well, I think in the discussion, if we have it as the new administrator comes on, it would be helpful to know what the selectmen's priorities are for the new town administrator. Uh, I would look at the revenue coming in and yes, I'm new since November. But I guess the question I have to ask is, are we bringing in all of the available local revenue at the levels that other towns are, are charging for fees and services? Um, is that something that should be you know, a priority going forward? Yes, we can't afford everything that's come through so far because most of the department heads um, are coming through with either added positions, higher salaries. It's almost like everybody assumes that there's a pot of gold somewhere that we don't know about, but they do. Um, and it would be helpful to know that the revenue is as best as it can be, whether coming in from the state and a clear understanding, whether it's through our state reps or whoever, what we can expect from state aid. And then locally, are, we, are our fee schedules up to date? And we have somebody new coming in from another town. Is that something that should be something for the new town administrator to look at to make sure we're maximizing revenues? Because we sure as heck can't afford the expenditure. That as think, yeah, did you watch the it. interviews? Did you watch the interviews? The the what the guy we got. Um, I don't know if you know Don Byers. She caught on uh, that we weren't collecting our new growth um, about three years ago. Well, he picked up on that right away. He seems like he really understands revenue. Um, mm -hmm. I'm. I don't know about anyone else, but I was really excited that we picked him. <laughs> Um, he worked for the Department of Revenue. Um, so 
I think that this this might be the guy to ask uh, this new town administrator might be just who you want for these things. But uh, yeah, he did he did pick up where one, at least one place where he had an issue in his in his interview. Okay. All right. Any anything else that we want to add to the agenda with the board of selectmen meeting joint jointly? All right. I think that about does it for that. Then um, does anybody else have anything that they want to bring up under new business? I want to make sure I exhausted the agenda. <clears throat> oh, the email for the reserve fund transfer. Okay, did everybody get a copy of that? There, there was some confusion associated with that too. Um, the request for the reserve fund transfer came from the, uh, uh, Lisa Green sent it for uh, the salary for recording secretary to the board of selectmen. So the form itself was extremely vague. I asked for some backup and was able to get a copy of the email Laurie O'Brien sent to Lisa Green. So. I did forward that with some trouble to the committee, I think on the third attempt. You should have the email that Laurie O'Brien sent to Lisa Green describing the um, reasoning for the transfer from the reserve fund. So this is something we're looking to hold over anyways to the next meeting, but I just wanted you to have that information. If you have further questions, we will certainly get them answered uh, next week when this comes on the agenda for action. There's no amount in there for how much they're looking for. There's an amount. There is an amount, yes. It's like 3,000 something. Yeah, yeah. How it much? Was finalized. No. In, her, in her email, she finalized it. But in this, uh, it was $1,454.40 on the reserve fund form. 1,000, okay. 1,454.40. Should this have come through as more complete? The actual um, yes. request itself and signed um, off by. You know. Usually, when we have a request from the reserve fund, you know, it is an extraordinary uh, expense, uh, not not in dollar figures, but it has to be unexpected and unusual. And the reasoning is, but the reasoning wasn't given with the reserve fund transfer form. That's all. That's why I asked for additional information, and the email does describe the backup. But should it have been signed off by Lisa other than forwarded to us the way it no. is? No, the action on the reserve fund transfer is strictly for the um, uh, finance committee to consider. Um, so what the procedure is for the request to come before the committee, it's held over to the following week. And then if you have questions, you will have formulated them by then and then we can get the answers and either vote yes or no on the request for transfer on the reserve fund. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, so that will hold that over to our next meeting. And I believe that exhausts all of the um, agenda items. As I said, I'll certainly entertain anything anybody has on the new business, Kathleen. Uh, just a quick question. Ken, were you trying to calculate what the cost of uh, not level funding salaries would be so i'm i'm, I'm doing this from memory um <clears throat> i believe if we took the department heads except um the fixed um cost changes for the town administrator and for the veterans officer because those aren't going to be going up by a percentage i believe the department heads if they all went up two percent it'd be about twenty eight thousand. um not everybody did that. That's just a, an example of how much it would be if everyone did do that. Um, the other positions are a little different because there are some step increases that have to be included. And I should have noted those on the last article two I sent out. Um, and then the, the others of positions are largely driven by union contracts that I'm not even gonna try to guess. Okay. Right. Well, so it just is another, um, another tool that we have. Um, that is why the article two is a workbook. So we should be plugging in these numbers at some point um, to see what we can do to uh, move closer to zero. Uh, that's all. So we have, we still have 
three months before we have to really get to the finish line on um, Article 2 and then start considering the warrant articles. But the other topic, too, is, um, you know, a special town meeting, I think, is something that we should be thinking about. Ken, we don't even have a copy of the draft warrant at this point, so it's going to be hard for this board to make recommendations for uh, the uh, special town meeting. So I did mention that to Lisa today. I guess there's some language that they're looking to finalize through the attorney, and we yep. should expect to have a copy of that in some form tomorrow. How are I they was, doing the meeting? Where are they going to do it? The special town it's meeting? Gonna be at, it's going to be at the high school. I guess there's a revised uh, quorum. Uh, I think it's only 25 people, as far as I know. Uh, they have approval for that few people for a quorum. Dave, did you have something? No, I was just going to say that uh, part of the documentation that was sent over from Lisa was uh, I think it's the agreement between the region and town of Whitman to use their facilities. Okay. Yep. Okay. If there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'm moved. moved. I see a motion in a second. Uh, Non-debatable. John Galvin. Yes. John Noon. Yes. Dave. Yes. Kathleen. Yes. Al. Yes. Chuck. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Rosemary. Yes. And I vote yes as well. Thank you, John uh, Galvin, for hosting the